I'm Donna Green Townsend. If you travel the meandering Ocklawaha or Silver River in North Central Florida through the clear water of Silver Glen Springs and through the lush foliage leading to Juniper Springs and on to Pat's Island in the Big Scrub in the Ocala National Forest, you will come to the place where a classic story for the ages was born. It was the year 1928 when a young journalist, Marjorie Canan Rawlings, brought her dreams of becoming a great writer to Florida. That dream took her here to the Big Scrub, where she received inspiration to write The Yearling. The coming-of-age story about a young boy and his pet deer has become one of the most beloved stories in the world. Before Marjorie Rawlings wrote her most famous book, she wrote a few short stories, sketches, and a short novel, including Jacob's Ladder, Gal Youngin, and others for Scribner's Magazine and Harper's Magazine. Literary manuscripts archivist at the George A. Smathers Libraries at the University of Florida, Florence Turcott, says Rawlings' earthy writing style caught the attention of a noted editor for Charles Scribner's Sons. She wrote a short story called Cracker Chidlings and she sent it to Scribner's Magazine and they published it. Well, that got the attention of the very famous editor Maxwell Perkins at Scribner's. He wrote to her and he said, I would like to see more. Do you, would you like to write stories and would you, would you consider writing an, a novel um, based on your experiences there at Cross Creek? She was thinking of herself as writing romances and um, sophisticated literature and he wanted to hear more about uh, the people that she was encountering, the, 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 the landscapes that she was encountering, that she was falling in love with and writing letters. So that correspondence that, that came to really fuel her literary maturation and, and sort of stoke her imagination in the creative sense um, came from back and forth letters with Maxwell Perkins. I can't say enough about how influential he was in her in her becoming a, an American author um, and a Florida author. Perkins' suggestion led to Rawlings' first major novel and a series of story-gathering trips to the Ocala National Forest. The connection that Marjorie made with, um, with the Cracker people started because of the moonshiner lad that she that she befriended, um, she would buy moonshine from Leonard Fidia, and he, of course, made his way into the story of South Moon under her first novel, where she chronicles the exploits of Lant Jacqueline and his moonshining ways, his transportation of, of moonshine along the Ocklawaha River, and the problems that he has encountered in his life of living in the Ocala National Forest, or as Marjorie called it, the Big Scrub. The late 100-year-old East Marion County resident, Richard Mills, was just eight years old when Rawlings moved to Cross Creek in 1928. Mills says it was Leonard Fidia who introduced Rawlings to Calvin Long in the forest, and that's where the yearling story came to life. Mills, who remembers visiting the Long homestead as a young boy, told the story with the help of his youngest son, Philip Mills. Little said he got, he said, I'll take you to a place where this guy's got a lot of stories. So Little said he took Lawyer Rollins to pass on. And then Fitty then brought her over to the local cow log to introduce her. And then they told her the story about the deer. And then she got the idea to write the story of the yearling. Who was the story of the yearling about? It was Cow well, uh, brother, right? The younger brother. Younger brother. I would say that would be Melvin Long. Scribner's editor, Perkins, loved Marjorie Rawlings' descriptions of the Cracker families in the Big Scrub in Florida. 
and he began to gently encourage Rawlings to write more on the subject, especially about the stories Rawlings learned from Cal Long. In 